welcome back to So This Is Thailand. Now on expert advice, we've had a lot of talks about especially health and skin health in particular. We've had a lot of feedback and so today we've invited another expert on the show to talk more about skin health and especially about how you can make sure that you maintain your health while staying here in Thailand. I'd like to introduce my guest today, Dr. Gowit Gampirapap, who is the head of the Department of Cutaneous Infectious Diseases from the Institute of Dermatology. Swadikrat, thank you for joining us. Hello. Well, I know, you know, anyone who's spent some time here in Thailand, uh, skin health, skin care especially, is so very popular among the Thais, but also something that the expat community should really be aware of. It's a tropical country. There's a lot of sunlight out there, obviously. Yeah. We see a lot of services, a lot of whitening services, and also some, uh, we might say, the make you more beautiful, some fillers, some Botox. What exactly is the difference between a filler and a Botox treatment? Uh, both are the agent that used to treat usually the wrinkle, the aging process. That uh, the filler is usually a gel-like substance that uh, you use to uh, inject uh, in order to treat uh, some wrinkles. And also they can be used to uh, fill in the defects some defects, especially on the face, and also can be used to augment the lips, mm. <laughs> the nose, that thing, that uh, are a part of the, the aging process. Oh, now Botox, if my understanding, Botox is, it really kind of uh, sedates some nerves to kind of relax the, the muscle to remove yeah, the wrinkles. Yeah, yeah. Whereas a filler is kind of used to fill in the areas which have naturally, as you mentioned, through the aging process, kind of deteriorated. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is one better or worse, or do they get used for ones for fine wrinkles or for mm. certain skin types? There are some uh, different, indi uh, different indications for uh, filler and Botox. Usually, uh, Botox uh, is uh, very effective to treat uh, the early, early uh, wrinkle that uh, will the so-called the dynamic lines, the lines that appear when there is a muscle contraction, like a crow's feet, crow's feet. Oh, I, I know <laughs> about those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and also uh, front lines. Yeah, that's uh, in the early stage, because uh, the Botox will paralyze the muscle, and so even when you smile, the the, the line will not show. On. Right, but uh, if the the line has a uh, uh, has been for some time already, mm -hmm. it is deep, and even you are not smiling, they also appear, uh, such as uh, the the nasal label for this line. Oh, okay. Yeah, and also deep uh, forehead lines, so that uh, you had better use the filler to treat it. Oh. And, but in, in some cases, it's best to use the combination. Oh, because because there's there, we, on our face, we, it's not just one type of, of yeah. wrinkle if you have yeah, many. Yeah, yeah. Now, I know that, in, especially in the news, we've seen some cases where people have gone to uh, non-official skin clinics or they might go to someone who claims to be a doctor mm -hmm. and they end up having a lot of damage because either the Botox or the filler in particular is quite a toxic substance. Yeah. Uh, how how do you avoid this, or what what are some good advice to make sure that mm. where you're going to is 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 official, it's registered, it's, it's safe? Yeah. Uh, be, because in in fact the the fillers that we use uh, to treat that for the aesthetic reasons are usually specially designed or produced for this purpose only. But if uh, the some people who go to some uh, the non-approved clinic, they, they are not doctors. They may be they, they are, uh, used to work in a clinic as a physician assistant. And so, so uh, uh, in order to provide the cheap, uh, what, to charge. Oh, uh, like a cheap fee, cheap service. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they, they have to look for the other kind of filler. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's maybe some industrial grade. Really? Yeah, yeah, silicone. Which is very the, dangerous to use. Yeah, yeah, very dangerous. They are very irritated, and uh, patients may 
get the allergic reaction to that. So that followed by a lot of complication okay. from that. Well, I know we, we always cover on the show, especially we always cover the preventative measures which are out there. But I know one question that we got recently was, if you've actually run into one of these issues, let's say you've already had some really bad treatment, you've had an allergic reaction, mm -hmm. is there anything that you can do afterwards to help repair the damage? Very difficult. Mm. Uh, if the, the complication occur, such as the extrusion of the material through, through the wound, they will produce oh. huge wound on that. And uh, there are other danger if you go to such uh, clinics. Uh, is that uh, there will be a lack of experience or even the basic knowledge about the anatomy mm. of the skin and something under the skin. So uh, they may inject, uh, not into the subcutaneous tissue, but inject into the blood vessel. Oh, wow. Yeah. Also, there's, it, it's a very technical procedure and one that yeah, really requires yeah, someone yeah. who's been Expertise, trained to do it. Uh, experience and knowledge. How do you know if the clinic you're going to is, is okay? Is there, is there like a certification that you have to have or? Uh, the best you go to hospital, mm. the aesthetic department, right? Aesthetic department in, in any hospital, such as in our institute, there are a laser and dermatologic surgery department. Then you know. Then we deal with that, all right? And also, if you don't want to go to hospital, you may visit skin clinic. Okay. Uh, but it's the best you, you uh, have better check out whether uh, the skin doctor there has any what, past training mm. in aesthetic medicine or in filler treatment or not ask for the certificate. That's mm. actually very good advice is do your research beforehand. Yeah before you go, let's say, under, under the needle. Yeah. Now, I know besides Botox and, and fillers, another big craze here, especially among Thais, is whitening. It seems we find whitening uh, in everyday products. We'll find it in uh, facial cream, uh, deodorant, just about everything. Mm. Uh, good or bad? Good or bad. Usually, the, in the market now, there are many kinds of so cream whitening. Uh, agent or some somebody may call it lightening or among a uh, skin doctor we call usually call it depigmenting mm. uh, cream there are so many products in the market right uh, but uh, unfortunately most of these products are not so in fact are not so effective oh. yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it can be effective to treat the Disorder of hyperpigmentation, hyperpigmentation of the skin. So if you had any like a uh, skin blemish or maybe some darkening of some area, it's good for that? Yeah, uh, you know, hyperpigmentation is now a, a major problem among the ties, especially in the culture that value. Eh? Yes. White skin for uh, health mm -hmm. or wealth. Yes, very right. true, very true. <laughs> it's a big problem. I have seen a lot of patients who uh, came to the institute every day to treat the hyperpigmentation. And the most common problem among the hyperpigmentation is melasma. You see? Oh. Melasma. And that can actually lead to, can that lead to skin cancer or? Oh, no, no, no. no. Melasma, not melanoma. Oh, melanoma, oh yeah. <laughs> Getting my yeah. terms mixed up, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that is the most common problem is uh, the, the pigment. Patients will develop the pigmented patches usually on mm. the face. What, what's the cause behind it? What's the cause? There are a few causes of this aging, uh, UV exposure, the sunlight exposure, and also some uh, hormonal oh. cause, uh, the female sex hormone, the so-called the estrogen. That can also induce. Call skin pigmentation. Yeah. So the melasma is usually see in females more than males. Mm -hmm. right? oh, that's interesting. Uh, and uh, these are for for this problem. So uh, the, the the whitening agents are quite effective. The whitening agents uh, mechanism of action, you know, 
it can decrease the production of the melanin uh, and that's pigment. That, that's because of the pigmentation. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, but the, the whitening agent will be effective only against the hyperfunction melanocyte, oh. not normal oh. melanocyte. So it's almost impossible to for you if you want to lighten your 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 natural skin. So you cannot use the whitening agent to make your skin uh, whiter Why when you are what constitutive mm. skin color, right? But it's effective to use it to treat hyperpigmentation. Okay. Well, one last question. I know we always talk about kind of a how do you get lighter skin? All these posts we might call them post applications, but let's say some preventative measures, some good advice mm. if you want to maintain your skin health and prevent mm. hyperpigmentation or mm. overexposure to the sun, mm. what should you do? Uh, use sunblock. Use sunblock. It's a very effective tool to prevent the sun damage, sunburn, and also photo aging. And also it can prevent, you know, prevent skin cancer. Oh. Once again, for those who are at home or in the office or wherever you may be, if you'd like to find out more information, do please visit the website that the good doctor mentioned, www.inderm.co.th. Thank you very much and hope to have you back on the show mm -hmm. in, the, in the near future. Thank you. Cup and cup. That's all from So This Is Thailand and Expert Advice, but don't go away because we have a lot more coming up. Welcome to Culturally Yours and I'm Bon Jacobson. It seems like we've just celebrated the new year and here we are already in the second week of November. Let's take a look at what exciting happenings are still to come this year. It is not an exaggeration to say that Bert Kong Chai McIntyre is one of the most beloved superstars in Thailand. For the past 25 years, Bert has never failed to give his fans some truly great songs to enjoy. He has a huge fan base here and he is celebrating with his upcoming concert, 25 years Bad Bird Bird Show or 25 years of celebrating in bird style, meaning young at heart or you'll never be too old for anything. Bird takes to the stage at Impact Arena Mueng Tong Thani from the 17th to the 25th of November and the ticket price starts from only 500 baht. So this is a perfect opportunity to see the Thai pop king wooing the crown with his song and dance routines. One other thing, you can dance your way to ThaiTicketMajor.com to book your ticket. If you're not grooving with birds, you may want another kind of excitement, which is why we'll bring you this very fun fair coming up next. The annual fundraising event of Bangkok British Community is back again. As always, the proceeds will go to many Thai charities as the fair is recorded to earn over 40 million baht every year since 2000. This is the event that you should not miss at all. So on the 24th of November, we'll see you at Bangkok Patana School Soi La Sal. The fair starts from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. But you might want to check in early just to avoid the traffic since all roads will lead to Plunjit Fair. Moving on to the next program, it is time to enter the Wild Wild West. The Wild West comes to Thailand? It is time to check out the Khao Khao Music Festival, where country music and bluegrass are celebrated. No doubt, lots of live bands performing country music and ballads. They are the Blue Mountain Boys, the Maverick, the Winchester Band, the Richard Band and many more. So grab your hats and boots and round up a pose to this festival. Buy your tickets and book your accommodation at Pechabun on the 8th of December. The festival will be held at Oasis Resort. Additionally, if you are up for a little competition, you can also join the cowboy and cowgirl pageant on the same day. For more details, please visit kaukaukowboy.com. What? Did I just hear a yeehaw? Oh yes, I'm sure I did. And that's a wrap for today. And we'll see you next week. For today, I'm Bon Jacobson. สวัสดีค่ะ.